Hello everyone, welcome back for another book review. So today we are talking about this one. So this is Pendulum Magic for Beginners, Tap Into Your Inner Wisdom by Richard Webster. This is one that was part of my husband and mother-in-law's collection. So I really, I never really would have like gotten a book on pendulums specifically. It's not my preferred tool and I don't know if that might have swayed me a little bit because I have not had the results that he talks about in this. So if you don't know what a pendulum is, it's basically a weight of some kind. Usually it's going to be crystal or wood, and it's typically kind of a roundish shape. Usually it has a point at the bottom, and then it's held on a chain, a cord, a string, whatever. And you hold it up and ask it to show you yes, and it'll swing a particular way, ask you to show you no, show you a particular way. Now the author doesn't actually explain that. It just says a positive and negative response and doesn't actually tell you what to look for. So that was the first thing that a lot of the reviews had also talked about because he just says, well, look for a positive response, but doesn't really explain that terribly well for a beginner. Like advanced people and people who are aware of it will know what he's talking about, but if you're brand new, probably not. The other thing is that the author constantly will push this idea that like, you can use your pendulum for everything, and I mean everything. And it's like, some of them are just plain terrible to use and others are just frivolous <laughs> and everywhere in between. One of his examples that he had is that he knew some lady, I think, that has a reaction to some ingredient or something to food and she would use her pendulum to say if it was in that food. Now, it could be that I was raised atheist so occasionally that side of me pops up but I just, I feel like maybe we don't use a tool that can easily be swayed, because he does talk about how you can sway the answer, that so easily could be changed for something as dire as like a food allergy and like a severe food allergy. And so like red flags, just a fly in for that one. But then also he will talk about like pulling out your pendulum to pick what book you should buy from a store, which is like, dude, if you have to use a tool to pick what book you're gonna buy, I think that says something about your life. Like, you need to reevaluate how often you are using this because you don't need that. That's like consulting your tarot and having a full spread every single day. That's a little bit of an overkill. Personally, he puts so much emphasis into how well this is going to work, and I have yet to really have mine work that well. And I thought about it afterwards, and I wonder if it's the particular one that I have that just might not be working because the one that I've been using for a few years now, it doesn't give correct answers. It's like a 50-50 shot that it's gonna be correct. To the point that I get fed up with it, because the main reason I like to use a pendulum is when I lose things. It always gives the wrong answers, every single time. Every single time it's given the wrong answers. There's only been a handful of times that I've used a pendulum and it has been spot on, and typically, and I don't know, maybe that's like something the author kind of mentions, because he does say you need to work with a pendulum for a year, before you can be like progressed from a beginner and like actually be in tune with it, which to be fair, yeah, probably. I don't know if it needs to be like a full year, <laughs> but at least a few months of working with it every single day. But that's with any tool, your wand, your chalice, your cauldron, your tarot decks, your oracle decks, your runes, whatever. Also, we have furniture moving upstairs. <laughs> whatever your tool or even deities and any aspect of your craft, you probably want to spend a good amount of time working with. So like, sure. But on a whole, when I've gone to use it, in the very sparing random times that it's actually worked, it's been the first time I didn't even know what witchcraft was. I just spontaneously came up with the idea of it. I don't think I'd seen it in any movies. Definitely wasn't in the conscious mind if it had been. And that I just asked a couple questions because I was freaked out because being in a haunted house is not exactly fun. And then the other time, again, it was also paranormal, <laughs> was contacting someone after they had passed. And emotions are high at that time, and yet somehow I was able to like, just kind of shut off the emotions for a minute and just focus. And so like, those are the only two times that I've ever had them work. Other than that, it's never worked. <laughs> like anything in the mundane, half the time, won't get my name right, won't get my age right, let alone if you're looking for items. Is it in my house? Sure. Is it in this room? Sure. Is it in this corner? No. Is it in this corner? No. This one? Yeah. 
And then lo and behold, it's in like a completely opposite part of the house entirely. So, I just don't really have the highest expectations. But again, it could just be mine in particular. I think I might just get rid of it because of how much it doesn't work. Because occasionally that does happen. You have tools that just don't work. But anyways, the point of that is that he doesn't really talk about that very much where the tool doesn't work for you. Not really a thing that he talks about or covers much. The very last thing for this book that I feel like is pretty important to include is that he ends with the advanced pendulum being Hawaiian magic, which I don't know how he got from one to the other because like I don't see the connection personally. And the way he presents the information to me sounds like the people that he's getting the information from we're trying to get information from a close practice and the people in the culture said no. And they're like, oh my god, I can't get answers. I ask them questions and they won't answer. That's usually an indication that they don't want to share their information. They want it to stay closed. And so he's like talking about how he could only find it from a couple people and none of them were native people, it sounded like. They were outsiders who had learned about it and tried to pry the information for where they could, and it just was like red flags. I don't know if it's like full cultural appropriation, but it was definitely teetering on that line, and really had absolutely nothing to do with a pendulum, because the concepts aren't really just Hawaiian. Like, yes, it's pretty, like, the words they use are definitely Hawaiian, and some of the beliefs are probably for them specifically, but the way he presents it is very universal at this point. Plenty of cultures have some degree of that. The idea of the three parts of the soul and like the idea of how kind of magic and stuff works and energy and things. It's like it's not really just Hawaiian. So it just felt really weird to include it anyways as your advanced form of using a pendulum because like you don't need to go to a closed practice because I'm pretty sure Hawaiian magic is pretty closed. I don't think that it's one of the open um, practices to do. Like, I think you kind of have to be, like, invited in by somebody who does it. But regardless, it's just one of those things where it's like, what does this have to do with this? And his premise is that it's, like, the baseline you need to use with your pendulum, which isn't really true, and just felt really out of place, and other people talked about that as well. So overall, it's not a bad book. There is definitely some red flags here and there that you need to be careful of, but if you're just starting to learn about the pendulum, I don't know that there's like any other books really on the pendulum. I haven't looked, but I mean it's not one you typically see. Tool books aren't very common, and I would put the pendulum more as a tool <laughs> than like a full divinatory system, because like the tarot, the runes, oracle even, they're pretty complex. A pendulum really isn't. <laughs> it, yes or no. That's the only... Well, and like, yes, no, maybe, and I don't want to answer right now. Those are your only options. It's not terribly complex. Anyways, I would love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comments down below. Huge thank you to my patrons. I'll have their names here on the screen. If you'd like to support me and get access to exclusive content, including the extended discussion for this book, it is over on my Patreon, patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts. Make sure to like and subscribe. I post every other day. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and blessed be.